Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I thought today we would go over the data mines of the last few days, mainly for the battle pass stuff and also a few little things that have come alongside it. The main stuff about the data mines is obviously the vehicles. We'll try and have a look at them when they're fully added to the game, probably tomorrow. Uh, but today uh, we're going to just have a look at the stats and also maybe some more events which are coming down the pipeline in the form of decals and of course deck decorations. We've seen the massive amount of Battle Pass stuff that's coming. Uh, I'll be doing a video looking at the challenges of the Battle Pass as well, uh, basically how I'm going to approach them and push forward with them, and hopefully it helps you get in an idea of how to complete them. Let's get into the data mines provided, as always, by Ashida. Let's get into them. So the first data mine was from yesterday, and the first part of it is of course the new loading screen, which is the SBZ-123 LGS. You get the loading screen by getting to level 100 of the battle pass, and at least for me, it's been one of the things that I've been collecting over time. I enjoy the loading screens, I think they're pretty fun, and one of the things they did for a little bit uh, with the SU-25 and also the A, uh, the sorry, the F-14, is they actually made certain loading screens where you had to play X amount of missions to be able to unlock them, and that was a cool incentive to actually play those vehicles. It would be nice if they brought stuff like that back. It's always nice to have like additional challenges, whether it's like camouflages or additional stuff like loading screens or decals to be able to kind of push that stuff forward. If you don't know what the loading screen of the Battle Pass is going to look like, it's always the cover image that they actually use for the Battle Pass. So basically this one is the three um, SPZs which are going down the road, um, the good old muddy road ravine that's around the place. They also added a line that indicated a summer event 2023, which isn't really a surprise. Uh, you've got to ask yourself why they decided to announce the page of history stuff so early compared to what they usually do, pretty much a week early overall. And the reason is, is simply that we'll probably get an announcement for the summer event stuff this week or next week, since it usually happens over August. Now, there's a bunch of vehicles that have been sat in the files for a long time or taken out of the files. Remember that Leopard 2 PSO that turned up and then just kind of disappeared again? Oh, who knows? Might be a summer event vehicle. The only thing I hope for the summer event is that we get more uh, kind of marks of distinction, which is similar to the Atomic Thunder event, where you have some which are the event long and some which are the 20Ks. It'd be nice to break them up, especially as a person who does all three of the types of marks, you know, for naval, air, and also ground. The B7A2, they added a gear sync range to it, uh, which is interesting, and also added two new weapons, the 20mm MK21 cannon and the 106mm Recolus rifle M40A1. These are two guns, which are for the SPZ, specifically uh, the LGS itself. If you actually have a look at the LGS, um, the overall stats of it are its rank 4, it's battle rating 6.7, and also its repair cost is 2,638 SL in realistic, which is pretty cheap. So this thing as a premium uh, will be quite nice. You'll be able to run it alongside a bunch of other vehicles like the Tiger 2H, Tiger 2P, and Bulldog. But as we've talked about in the past, the difference between a German player who has stuff like the Tiger 2 105 and the Panther 2 and one which doesn't is insane. So I'm hoping that going forward, uh, this will kind of bridge the gap a little bit for that 6-7 area and uh, should be pretty good for that. The B7A2 Homer 23, so this is the B7A2 with the upgraded engine, it actually is rank 3, so you can do daily specials, and it is BR 3.7 in realistic, and also arcade 4.0 in uh, simulator. The repair cost for it is 1540 in RB, which is pretty cheap. So this is exactly the same BR as the standard B7A2, even though this one is better than it. Now, the question is, how much better is it? Well, it's got pretty much the same armaments. The major difference is, of course, the slight engine boost. And you've got to kind of work out whether you think that's enough to be able to kind of push forward the vehicle or if it's okay 
being at the same bar as the thing which is you know slightly uh slightly worse than it i think overall this will just be a straight swap for my b7 since i like running like a bomber and a fighter at the same time in grounded naval and since it does exactly the same job as the other one i feel like it would be nice uh, to have as a replacement. I feel like for people who haven't ground out the Japanese aviation tree though, the B7 can be used all the way up to pretty high BRs because it has the 800 kilo bomb, so you can always donk people if required. The MC485 for Italy, it's rank 3 and also going to be BR 2.7. The only issue I have with this vehicle, by the way, it's arcade and uh, realistic repair cost is 743 and 951 SL respectively, so super cheap uh, is basically it. But the, the thing for me about the MC485 is I'm a bit worried about the firing angles on the 40 millimeters on the back of it. Usually when I've ran into vehicles which are similar to that in that way, uh, there is a few issues uh, in terms of how it's able to, you know, uh, shoot out and uh, also get the guns on target, especially for a vehicle, which is not exactly hugely survivable. They also added in all of the 3D decorations, which are now in the house, plus the Bundeswehr infantrymen and the tech tree icons and stat card images for the vehicles as well. They changed a few modification descriptions for some incendiary bombs uh, which is kind of interesting uh, not huge changes just basically changing them from fire bombs to incendiaries uh, which makes more sense and they also renamed a few shells so the 0243 is now the 0240 the 90 millimeter obostirupshur is the pco 50 and the type 1956 heat fs is now just the 56 heat fs same with its apds as well they also added the name and description to david curry's avatar um, because that was something they added in a previous uh, update or previous data mine it turned up and as i said stuff like that is kind of surprising it's come out so early but if they're planning more stuff going forward such as the economy stuff we saw today and also some other things maybe not so surprising they also made it so the task for the Russian event is no longer limited to the Russian language. For me, it never actually was, weirdly enough, because I had all my languages in English and it still popped up. Maybe uh, some other parts of it, or maybe I did switch stuff up. But uh, it's nice to see it's available to everybody. This is the T3485E event that we talked about last week. Hopefully you've either got it done or picked up the T3485E at the discount. And I'm hoping we see it more. There was also a bunch of decals added. Uh, obviously you have the Battle Pass ones. You have the Royal 22nd Regiment. The Chinese 112th uh, Mechanized Infantry. Both of those are part of the Battle Pass. And then also uh, you have the other ones which are as well. The Indian Mechanized Infantry Regiment and the US 5th Infantry Regiment. The other thing is you do actually have a Zodiac for cancer and uh, that's really cool um, basically it's just a pinup of cancer and uh, for me uh, I am technically a cancer so looking forward to um, getting it or at least trying to cancer in more ways than one some would say but the, <laughs> the thing is you know it's always nice to have these type of insignias um, they're kind of hard to collect since they bring them out pretty much every battle pass like right now there's the taurus one that's available and you also have like a few boxes uh, which have some of the the decals in so if you want to pick them up you can do but at the same time like it, it's a lot of effort just to get you know something like that if you want to collect them about they also added a new backup type, which was Italy Coastal, which, you know, makes sense because whenever they add these Battle Pass vehicles, they put some unique, specific uh, backups for the different vehicles in, and this will be for the MC. Also, for the B7A2 Hamer, they changed the propeller blade's width, uh, which, you know, makes sense. I'm guessing they probably plugged it in as just a copy-paste vehicle, uh, but it does have a different engine, therefore it does have a different propeller on it. So that's the slight difference between the vehicles, and we'll see them as they go forward. Then uh, you have some new menu texts, and pretty much all of these menu text texts are to do with the uh, compensation stuff, the SL insurance that they brought in uh, for premium players, so another reason to get premium. 
and obviously you'll just never lose a cell again. <laughs> it's just nuts to think about, of course, if you have auto repair turned off. So overall, um, you have the automatic repair of all vehicles for free, victory of the percentage S mission, victory of the, of the percentage S mission, SLRP, CRPD, GLD, SAP, and PA, and all of this good stuff. So overall, it actually probably makes more sense now to turn on automatic repair instead of off, which sucks um, because, you know, it's kind of an end of an era uh, for me because I've been battling for this stuff for approximately 11 years now. And finally, it is actually just disappearing and, you know, uh, life becomes a lot more simpler. They also added all the decal names, the decals that we talked about before, and the Gunnet change time, which is the one that they added today. Um, I was looking everywhere for how long it would actually change the Gunnet to, to change, and the Gunnet change time is three seconds. So a lot of vehicles are still going to be able to get access to their um, you know, commander controls before people reload, but it's going to be a lot, a lot uh, longer now before they can fire back. So three seconds instead of zero, which is a big move. Then also, uh, it says it would seem that Gadget intends to make summer winter crafting event vehicles visible again. Uh, so this could either be for uh, a cell boxes or maybe some kind of trade system or maybe they just want to show what people are missing so they can try their luck on the market and there's also a new title which is ambush master but this is the one for the battle pass which is starting tomorrow so make sure to get involved make sure to get into it and have a bit of fun and onwards and upwards as always when it comes to war thunder and all of its events hope you all have a wonderful day and i'll see you next time I'd just like to thank Millie Draper, Juan the Panda, Nick R. Kupila, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie B. Young, Peter Grayling, Jerry Provolt, Bereen, Alan Hacker, Sem Arslan, Uncle Bean, Derek R., and Lafouche for supporting the channel.